So I'm overhauling my cooling system on my 86 V12 XDS. I've put a couple of videos on already, but today's just a really little one. This piece, which isn't connected, goes from the back of the block there into the heater core, which is down in there. If you, yeah, that's it. I read in a in the palm book that you that is actually one of the highest spots on the cooling system, and it's hard to get air out. So why not put an air bleed valve in? So that's exactly what I've done. There's the new hose. There's the air bleed valve. I'm just putting that in. I'm going to put it back in, and that is. Um, This piece, which isn't connected, goes from the back of the block there into the heater core, which is down in there. If you, yeah, that's it. I read in a in the palm book that you that is actually one of the highest spots on the cooling system and it's hard to get air out so why not put an air bleed valve in so that's exactly what I've done there's the new hose there's the air bleed valve I'm just putting that in I'm going to put it back in and that there it is fitted the geometry is right I'm pretty happy with that so I'm going to put it on the car so there's the part ready to go on this is the T uh, Filler cap, of course. That um, oh, these are all the tubes. That goes to the thermostat. There, thermostat. I've got the pipes in here waiting. There's a the thermostat housing. There's the other one. These are all waiting and greased. So I'm just going to put that on now. Okay, tried for a few minutes, and what I realised is that you've got to push these right onto the onto the fitting here as tight up as you can get them and then you can get it on and I also removed this piece just a bolt but uh, the guidance there on getting it on easily okay that's on now um, I, I, it was a tough thing to get on like I said all of these pipes went right up and right in and then I could put the put the pipe on and slide slide the little stretches of hose back I've oriented these so that, I, so that I can get to them next time without, you know, when I have less access. And by the way, if you have never used one of these, they're excellent little tools. They're so cheap, so easy for doing everything up. They're ratcheted. Just going to tighten these up now with a short wrench. Progress. I have put the fa uh, belts back on. There's the power steering belt, air conditioner, air pump belt, alternator belt was already on. I've just got the, um, what does, oh that's the fan, that's the fan there, I'm just going to do that one now. So, got the new fan on, although it took me some on and off and on and off. First of all I put the fan onto the coupling, the viscous coupling, and tried to put that onto the, the little plate there. And it's really hard to get to. So I took it off, and I took the fan off, and I put the viscous coupling on, and then came along and thought, what was I thinking, because I can't get the fan on now. So I took it off again and put the fan back onto the viscous coupling, and then to put my hands in there, using a long, the longest 14 inch, I've, 14 mil I've got, and I slowly did it up. But I realized I couldn't do the bottom one, so I reduced the tension on the belt so I could turn this, turn this around and get to the top one all the time and then I'm tighten up the tension to hold this still and now I can tighten these bolts it's a real pig I got these off and it was a pain and one of the bolts is a little bit rounded the good news is the blades are slightly uneven every now and again there's a gap and you can use that gap to get a, a wrench or spanner in there there's like one two three I don't know why there's gaps maybe joints or something but anyway those gaps work out pretty well so I've got one more to tighten up 
I've got this wrench on here on the tightener here, which tightens up the belt and holds the pulley still. So I went to put the shroud in. It didn't fit around the fan very well. I realized my fan was too big. So I took it out and I'm cutting 10 centimeters off of each one. So the, the, the size is like 105 and 110 there. You can see this one looks like it's been cut as well in the past. Didn't think much of it, but maybe this is a replacement. Anyway, I guess there's lots of different sizes. I got it from Rock Auto where I get most of my stuff and uh, most of it fits, some of it doesn't. But boy, I've took, taken this uh, fan out a few times today. Still, that's the uh, joy of keeping an old car, right? So today I'm going to finish off putting the hoses on, reconnect all the electrics, put the top plate on, possibly put the brackets on, I'm not sure, and fill it. Oh, and I got the uh, header tank to go in. I've got the expansion tank with some additional tubes, um, which are positioned at low and high in there. I've got that to go in and I'm going to fill it with coolant. But first I'm going to show you this little thing I did. So the, the pipe that goes from the heater, there we go, the heater return, heater core return, there's a little pipe on the end, I changed it. So the old one is a perfect fit under here for draining, and I think hopefully you can see that, there's a drain tap on the bottom of the radiator. There's a little rod that runs to the top of the rad, and you can drain the radiator without coming under here. And I fitted the hose that used to go from the heater core back to the radiator, which is just there somewhere. I fitted it onto there, and I just tuck it in there, but not needed. And then you can get it out, put it into a tub, you know, or, and it's just permanently there. I think that was pretty good. So, got the expansion tank in. I use this webbing to hold it in place. Got the tubes through there. You can see the two extra ones. And I just got them coming out here. The, I can extend. If I want to fill that thing up, I can pour water through there. One of them's low, one of them's high. I can check the level. And, you know, water's never going to come out of those tubes. It's right up here. So, that's pretty good. So I got this line in, comes into here, there's a banjo bolt there, which I really cleaned out. This line in, and this line in. And all this does is draws off the air from the radiator, from the T-pipe, from the top of the manifold, and puts it in to the header tank. And then the header tank has a suction from the pipe I'm just about to put in, which is this one goes in there and feeds straight into the water pump. That's how it works. Okay, I got this Gano radiator cooler filter. So it's a see-through, as you can see, um, Jubilee clips, and it goes like that. Now, I haven't given it enough space there, but I wanted to put this temperature sensor in. so. It's doing its job, but I won't be able to see much of the um, fluid, you know, the coolant running through. But I'm going to put it on this side, uh, in here or in there. And this is from Gano. They're about 50 bucks, which seems a lot for what it is. But um, anyway, it came recommended, so I just plumbed for it, and I'm going to fit that. So, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I got it all back together. I filled it with probably 30%. Uh, antifreeze because it took four gallons and I think it's not still full but there's the filter now that's brand new clean coolant just goes to show how crap the engine is inside I've got a filter in there I'm hoping over time that will clean up I'll probably uh, maybe change all the coolant again in about a thousand miles to clear those filters out and try and improve it in there but so far so good just letting it heat up, let the air come out. Um, the low fluid uh, coolant level light is on, but um, and that's to be expected. I'm not going to run it too hot. I'm just going to run it here now. I'm going to let it sit and change the oil. 